What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in this video we're talking about more professional setting fragrances. So we've got some modern stuff, some more blue-esque type of stuff that's very polished and refined for being blue fragrances. We've got some timeless stuff that would be deemed a little more on the mature side. Timeless perfumery, classic masculine type of stuff if you will. All really good for professional settings. We're talking business professionals, indoor office settings, and so on. Or just situations where you want to add a little bit of class and elegance to the scent profile to maybe match your vibe and your current attire for said situation. So we've got 10 of them. Let's discuss. Stay tuned. Starting with one of the newest to my collection, I'm very impressed by this fragrance. I love the line. I have three of the four offerings at this point. It's Brioni Eau de Parfum. So Brioni Eau de Parfum, the way I like to describe it is kind of like a reimagining of Fahrenheit. So it does not have the leather. It does have that familiar slightly petroleum, gasoline type of violet to it, but a very fruity apple. It's even a little resinous and rich and smoky smelling on my skin. Uh, there's a deep woody tone to it. But that violet and apple are definitely the stars of the show with this fragrance. Performance is not in your face, but it does last a long time. It wears like a true eau de parfum where it has a little bit of pop to it without being very bright and effervescent. Uh, very rich, fruity without being too sweet, floral without being too flowery or feminine in any way. It really has a class and elegance for being what I would consider a higher level refined blue fragrance. Definitely worth getting your nose on and checking out if you haven't yet. And that's Brioni Eau de Parfum. A timeless aromatic style done to perfection in my opinion. My favorite barbershop fragrance is from Maison Margiela. This is the replica line at the Barbers. It's replicating being at the Barbers as you would expect. Bright and spicy aromatics, that aftershave feel. A little bit of shave foam going on here as well as a leathery facet that's not real animalistic. It's more smooth and toned overall clear as day. Like this is, in my opinion, the most well-rounded barbershop-esque scent profile I own. And I own a lot of fragrances that fall into that style. Thank you, Platinum Ego East from Chanel and so on, which I don't have a full bottle of. I have a sample of. I'm very familiar with Authenticities, Barbershop. Um, just the list goes on and on. There's a lot of ways to kind of get this scent profile in men's perfumery, but I feel like this, you get the best quality meets performance that's not too intrusive and overwhelming uh, and is great for an everyday driver type of scent profile. Very elegant, classy, and classic. Can dress down just as well as it can dress up, I believe, but definitely a better professional setting fragrance, if anything. If I had to pick one thing that it was best for, I would say professional settings for sure. This is absolutely worth getting your nose on if you haven't smelled it before. In my opinion, it's the best barbershop fragrance, Mason Margiela Replica at the Barber's. In my personal opinion, the king of the blue fragrance mountain. If you like warm, woodsy fragrances, you will appreciate Bleu de Chanel Parfum. I think this is the best fragrance for a suit and tie when it comes to blues. So you get a little bit of a zesty citric tone at the top, but it's all about soft yet warm, resinous and rich smelling woods. Cashmeran, there's Isoe Super in here, there's Sandalwood, I believe Cedar's in here as well. There's a, a variety of woody notes. And like I said, there's a little bit of this smoky resinous tone to it. It's very rich, very warm. It wears a little on the heavy side, though I have worn this in high Houston heat outside back when I used to work at Mercedes-Benz. So this will do just fine in the heat. It's not gonna scream off of your skin. This is a not a loud attention-grabbing fragrance, though when noticed by others, very pleasant, very professional, very smooth. This is smooth and rich. Like I said, when it comes to blue fragrances, there's not too many I would put in the same class. All the ones I put in the same class of this are in this video, and we discussed one of them already with Brioni Eau de Parfum. But in my opinion, the ultimate version of Blue de Chanel. Yes, the EDP is great. Yes, the Eau de Toilette is timeless. I get it. You can't go wrong with any of the versions of Blue de Chanel, but in my opinion, if you want the most professional, you're going to want to go with Blue de Chanel Parfum. Now, this was a recent pickup. So in the past, I did not like the way this smelled on my skin, and I was very turned off by it years ago. I gave it another shot and decided to buy a 50 ml bottle, and it reeks of masculinity and class. It is Terre d'Hermes 
Oh Intense Vetiver. This is one of the more classy, earthy type of vetivers out there. So at first, it does have a little bit of that dark, earthy funk to it on my skin when I first spray it. It does still do that to me, but it's not off-putting the way it used to be. And then as it dries, it really comes into its own as a refined, smooth, woodsy type of scent profile. Very woody fragrance uh, because of the way this vetiver, come, vetiver comes across. Orange, a slightly bitter orange tone at the top, but it does freshen up as it settles in. But definitely smells of pretty good quality vetiver. I wouldn't put this in some of the luxury tier vetivers, but for a designer, Terry Hermes is world-renowned at this point in men's perfumery for their vetiver fragrances. And this one being potentially one of the most challenging for some, at least it was for me in the opening, but as it settles, this is magic in a bottle. If you're looking for a more refined and matured masculine scent profile that admittedly not going to be for everyone, but can be very much appreciated by the right person in the right setting with the right attire, this is definitely one of those fragrances. And that's Terre de Hermes Eau Intense Vetiver. The last of the three blues that I consider to be in a class all by themselves when it comes to professional settings and being the most refined and smooth in the blue fragrance class, this is Ralph Lauren's Polo Blue Parfum. I like this more than any other version of Polo Blue. This is my favorite. It ties directly to the DNA, still has that watery green aquatic cucumber smell to it, but again, has more of a rich, warm feeling to it, very smooth. It's oceanic and green. It's true to Polo Blue. If you put it next to the Eau de Parfum, you see the evolution. If you put it next to the Eau de Toilette, you see the evolution. It doesn't scream off the skin, again, like the other two blue fragrances we featured in this video and talked about, but it does last a long time. And maybe the most playful of the three when it comes to the blue fragrances that are in this particular list topic, but also the smoothest and most refined. This, I would say, is for a more professional setting for somebody that maybe grew up on Polo Blue. Maybe that was your jam when you were younger, in your teens, early 20s, and you kind of want that nostalgic hit, but the smoothest version, the most rich and refined take possible that's ever been created on Polo Blue, this would be the one. Like I said, rich, woody, even comes across a little balsamic. Um, it's very, very warm while still being fresh, and blue aquatic with a hint of green spice in the backdrop. This is just mwah, magnificent. I think they absolutely did a phenomenal job. Another wonderful blue fragrance to dress up in a professional setting, Ralph Lauren's Polo Blue Parfum. This next one's a recent acquisition that's kind of a timeless style with some modern nuances and touches to it. Uh, I've kind of fallen head over heels with this. It smells like the color of the juice. It's very lemon heavy, aromatic at the top. It is from Jacques Foth. This is Velissou. This is gorgeous. Classic masculine. There are some modern notes such as Ambroxan in here. There's a little bit of fig leaf that offers this kind of juicy, slightly bitter fruity tone without having a real sweetness. It's a warm lemon with this herbaceous green spicy tone. Fresh yet warm is basically the way the top comes across to me with this. Quality to the nines. This will dress up very well. Professional setting, everyday driver type of stuff. This is managerial role and above. That's kind of what it smells like to me. Class, well put together, well structured, a lot of nuance and interesting scent profile overall. I don't think this comes across as something that too many younger gentlemen will enjoy, but I would think a lot of guys in a professional setting or like that professional style of fragrance, 30 plus, will very much enjoy the quality and the blend and the style of this aroma. Falls somewhere in between what I would consider barbershop meets aromatic fougere because it does have the aromatics with the lavender and the citrus and some of the greens while still having some different nuances to it, like I said, such as fig leaf, such as ambroxan, while still being grounded by a little hit of some earthy green oak moss. This surprised me at just how good it is, and it absolutely fits this topic perfectly. It's from Jacques Foth. It's Verlesou. I don't know if there will ever be a time for it to be okay for this fragrance to not be featured in a list topic such as this. It's the ultimate professional fragrances, right? So for decades, over half a century now, Eau Sauvage from Dior has fallen into that category. A true citrus aromatic with real fougerish qualities, a lot of greens to this coumarin type of feel. 
lemon, bright, spicy greens, but very much on the fresh side. So timeless. There's so many fragrances that have come out because this came out originally in 1966. This is the, the reissue of it in the modern era. So I'm sure it's not the exact same formula, but it's of the same vein of the original formula, that classic style flacone. The bottle is gorgeous, very vintage look, but timeless and classy. If you're into more classic men's perfumery, you like the more vintage scent profiles. I mean, it doesn't get more iconic, in my opinion, than Dior Eau Sauvage. There's a bunch of flankers, don't get me wrong, that I do think are a little bit better, but, you know, respect is, is earned with certain fragrances, and it's been earned tenfold with a fragrance like Eau Sauvage, and it deserves its flowers. So, like I said in the intro portion of this segment, I don't think it's ever okay to have this list topic and not feature what very well could be the greatest professional setting men's fragrance of all time. I mean, let's call it like it is, right? A citrus aromatic that's full of lemon and greens, Dior Eau Sauvage. Now this is a very personal choice to me because I like wearing this one with a suit and tie. It's my favorite fragrance to wear with a suit and tie. I feel underdressed when I wear it without at least an Oxford. So professional settings, CEO managerial role, this is a great nuanced high quality fragrance for you. It's Zaharoff's Signature Pour Homme. Now, this is the base DNA that has spawned all of the flankers at the recording of this that are currently available from Zaharoff, minus the Zed Creators collection, but all of the signature line fragrances are based off of this DNA in some form or fashion. So you get a lot of beautiful lavender, lavender heavy, at the top without being super soapy, a lot of green cypress. There's resins, it's very warm, spicy, and oriental on skin. It actually has a warming quality on my skin. There's florals such as iris, but I don't really get any of that. It's mainly about the lavender, the greens, like I said, the resins and spices, and the woods. It does nuance, it does change, but warm and spicy is one thing that it never gets away from on my skin. Lasts a very long time, and I've had people tell me that it's really loud off of their skin. I've never had it really scream off of my skin, but it does create a nice consistent scent bubble that I would consider a pretty good sillage overall, but not really a strong projector early on. Like, I don't fill a room no matter how I spray this one, uh, which it's not, I'm not the heavy spray type with fragrances like this anyway, but class, elegance, Quality, well blended by Master Perfumer Claude Deere, absolutely sample worthy. You can get a sample anytime, day or night, from the Zaharoff website. If you haven't tried this one yet, you might be missing out, especially if you like professional scent profiles. I, I, like I said, it's my favorite to wear with a suit and tie. I would encourage you to get your nose on this one. Zaharoff Signature Pour Home. Juicy, slightly bitter citrus, watery, peppery, slightly earthy vetiver. We're talking about Blue Noir Eau de Toilette extreme from Narciso Rodriguez in the For Him Blue Noir line this fragrance surprised me and how much I actually enjoy it so if you like let's say fragrances in the realm of this you like the earthy vetivers but you want a very fresh much more wearable take that still doesn't take away that professionalism of a scent profile like that that clean classy feel you're going to get that here you still get all of that vetiver with some pepper. Like I said, it's a strong peppery note. If you like pepper in a fragrance, which I'm a huge fan of, love spices, especially pepper notes. Very prominent here, while still having a watery accord that freshens it up quite a bit, adds kind of a vibrance and brightness to that peppery tone with a vetiver that's not too earthy. It's not too dirty and smoky. If anything, it manages to have the smoky nuance of an earthy vetiver while maintaining a ton of freshness from the citrus and the watery accord that are featured in here. Obviously, it's inherently woody as it dries down. I would say if you're in a warmer climate, this might be the choice for you better suited than all of the other fragrances in this video because of the freshness while still being very grounded by that classic masculine, peppery, spiced, woody tone that just does so well in these settings. It's an ideal choice for this particular video and probably the most idealistic choice in the line. Now, I haven't tried them all. I haven't tried the Eau de Parfum. The Parfum is an iris fragrance. I don't think it's the same situation in settings, but the EDT Extreme from Narciso Rodriguez and the Blue Noir line, it's a really, really good one. I encourage you to try it. Still my favorite from the house, still such a great timeless masculine scent profile is Creed Viking. It's never a bad time. So it's bright, it's airy, it's citric, minty, fresh, and aromatic, pink pepper, a 
bunch of pink pepper at the top. You get a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of a fiery hot feel while still being super airy and fresh. Because like I said, you have citruses, aromatics, and mint. This mint is understated for how good it actually is in this fragrance. Very woodsy as it dries, but a very timeless. This is kind of falls into kind of the realm of a barbershop fragrance, something like this, but they don't smell exactly the same. There's no real leather dominance here. It's more about peppers, mint leaf, and aromatics. Uh, so it is a very spicy aromatic feel, kind of like that, but it doesn't have that shaving foam feel. This is more that aftershave splash type of feel, a good spicy aftershave. Think fragrances like Old Spice, for example, that Old Spice aftershave smell, just done to Creed standards of quality. This is still, for as many Creed fragrances as I've picked up this year, such as Virgin Island Water, Aventus Cologne, Original Suntal, and so on, this is still my favorite from the house. I don't know if anything's be able to pull it down from its mountain peak, but if you like this style scent profile, professional stuff, stuff we would categorize as a professional setting, a masculine, slightly mature, big boy type of scent profile, proper dress up fragrance for a man. I think in some ways I saved the best for last, even though it's not a ranked video, none of my lists ever are. You should really try this. It's pricey. It's pricey, don't get me wrong. But there's a reason it's my favorite from Creed. I'm talking about Viking. Well, that's the 10 that I have for you today. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Because I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. Of the 10 that I featured here, what have you sampled or tried? What are you a fan of? Or what sparked your interest? What was maybe a turnoff for you? I'd love to see what some of you guys have to say down in the comments below. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of these 10 and you give them a spray now, you might end up thanking me later. Have a good one, guys.